So gaslighting, why? Why would somebody do that? It's for power, for power, power in the relationship. Thank you so much for joining us again on Second Act TV. Once again, I want to welcome back Joni Caldwell Lerner, the motivational coach and dating coach extraordinaire. <laughs> Joni, oh. thanks for being here again. Oh, from your lips to God's ears. Thank you. <laughs> I always love being here. Well, and we, we have such great topics that, that you bring to the table. And one of those topics today, Joni, I think is, is incredibly important. And that is gas lighting. We've talked about it on other shows, never quite in depth. And I feel like this makes a really, really important discussion because it is so closely associated with narcissism. So, so let's talk about that. What is gaslighting? Well, uh, gaslighting is where somebody will manipulate another person, the, the, the perpetrator in this case, Gaslighter. And the term comes from an old movie called Gaslight. And, and the, the husband would be in the attic and he'd be flickering the lights and she'd say, the, the lights were flickering. He said, no, they weren't. Yeah. And there's another movie, actually a more recent one. It's called The Invisible Man with Elizabeth Moss. It, it, it is, it's a ride. But gaslighting is where they tell you your reality is not true mm -hmm. and push their agenda on you so much and and you want to love them and you want to be loved and all those things and and you begin to believe what they're saying so it, they distort your reality yeah it's a, it's a way to manipulate and to control by exactly. making you com completely insecure like you're going crazy it's actually it was interesting the work gaslighting uh, was in 2018 not 28 yeah 2018 the most uh, one of the most popular words in the oxford dictionary so gaslighting, why? Why would somebody do that? It's for power. So yes, manipulation and control, you're absolutely right. But why? For power, power in the relationship. We don't know where they learned it. They could have picked it up along the way from another relationship where they were gaslit. Who knows where it comes from? Yeah, it, it's, it's the beginnings of a toxic relationship and you have to be aware of the flag. So let, let, let's talk about that, the signs mm -hmm. that somebody may be trying to, to, to gaslight you. And the first one is that they never take responsibility. Right. So if everything is your fault, then you know they're never taking responsibility. So in a, in a healthy relationship, a person says, I'm sorry that I X, Y, Z. And the other person can say, thank you for saying that. And I'm sorry that I reacted that way. Yeah. They never take responsibility. It's always your fault. And you begin right. to believe it. There's something broken about you or something. Yeah. And Definitely. that's, which is of course, so indicative of narcissism uh, by itself is never taking mm -hmm. responsibility mm -hmm. for anything. So big, big, big sign. Uh, the next one, uh, maybe a bit more indicative of gaslighting is their conversations or uh, perhaps uh, more specific, their arguments confuse you. Talk about that. Oh, if you're in a conversation or an argument with somebody who is gaslighting you, they're so good at it they kind of run circles around you, you know? And at the, end of the, at the end of the conversation, you feel more confused than clear. You feel more um, muddled than anything. Then that's an indicator that there's, there's something off here in that communication. It's like, no, no, no. What I was saying is, <laughs> and they're like, no, that's not real. That's not yeah, true. Exactly. Well, and then that goes to number three, you doubt your own thoughts that you regularly trust their word and diminish your own. I mean, you could be a perfectly average person starting off in this with a, a, a fairly healthy self-esteem and, and all that. But if you're bludgeoned enough times with lies and uh, manipulations and gaslighting, you, you begin to believe them, which means you doubt you. Yeah. So you may wonder, well, how could a perfectly, you know, how could a person fall into that trap? Well, it's, they're so good at what they do. Exactly. Yeah. And well, and then you become more quiet and timid. If you're usually an outgoing person, 
and or, or very well, as you said, more confident. But now all of a sudden you find yourself apologizing for things mm. you say all the time you know, not to, not to hurt someone's feel or, or, well, in this case, your partner's gaslighting you, that that's really something to pay attention to. If you keep saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, pay attention to that. Because mm -hmm. you, you can't be wrong that many times, number one. Number two, if you've lost your sparkle, if you used to be vivacious and enjoy life, and now you're, you're as you say, uh, introverted and quiet and, and doubting your own truth, that means that you might be too afraid to speak up or say anything now because every time you do, you're made wrong. Mm -hmm. Every time you do, you get slammed in some way, you know, whether very obvious or subtle and sneaky. Listen, if I want to say it now because I don't want to forget to say this. In a relationship, the, the goal is the happiness of the other person and the couple together. So you want to be happy yourself. You want the other person to be happy and you want as a partnership to be happy. If he's not, she's not holding you up to the light, let's say, mm -hmm. and saying, you know, you're great. And I really enjoy being with you. You know, those are things that he should be saying, not or she, <laughs> not you're wrong. You're wrong. Right. You're wrong. Well, or that's the next point. Oh. You're, caught, you're being told you're crazy. You're literally uh, being told you're crazy. That if you bring up something or you say something, so what, what did that, you're, that's crazy. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. So your subconscious is hearing that you're crazy, number one. And, and number two, that's contempt. Mm -hmm. How dare they? And if they say things like, what's wrong with you? Ooh, that's a little flag there, right? What's wrong yeah. with you? Nothing's wrong with me. If you disagree with what I'm doing, or you don't think that this is the right thing, or whatever, you say, huh, what made you say that? What made mm -hmm. you do that? We do something different. Not what's wrong with you. You're crazy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that, that oh, to me, that, oh, that always <laughs> raises you're crazy. That, that, that's a, such a red flag in so many ways because they're not wanting to admit to something that happened to call you crazy. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty, pretty big word. <laughs> well, and listen again, every one of these is a play for power. Right. That's a power play. You're crazy. I'm not. You've lost your sense of self. You don't no longer feel like the person that you used to be and, and feel like perhaps you're overly sensitive or overly hurt. You're just reacting to stuff wrong. Yeah. And so that indicates trauma. You're being traumatized by the gaslighting. So the person who gaslights wants to control and manipulate you and your life and your life together for whatever the agenda you know, usually it's fear underneath control. Always it's fear underneath control. And so if you're not living your own life, if you don't have your own hobbies, if you don't have your own friends, if you don't have your own existence, you're living their life. You've now subjugated yourself and your personality. Look at my body went in. So you, you want to you wanna live your life like that, mm -hmm. you know, fully in your own power. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's, again, the, the, the narcissist quality of it. Uh, they want to strip that from you. And it's, oh. it's something that's so important to be aware of. You suddenly lack self-esteem that you were someone that had self-esteem, but it's, it's just, yeah, you just feel bad about yourself now. It's gone. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes we have a narcissistic parent, or we have a gaslighting parent, or we had a gaslighting boss, or, a, you know, we get, it's, it's strange, it's almost like our subconscious gets a little groomed toward accepting this or not seeing it or seeing it as normal, right? So somebody who is very aware, like Dr. Romani, for example, I don't mm -hmm. think you could gaslight her. Um, <laughs> Anytime on this planet, if you've not seen any of her YouTube videos, Dr. Romani is an expert in narcissism. She's an expert in gaslighting. And if you're in a relationship where this is going on, in order to heal this, you need uh, sources to help you. Yeah, you can't have enough resources, you know, and you and I talk about this. We, in a lot of ways, you know, we refer to experts, we offer our own opinion. Uh, so yeah, go to seek out the experts, especially if you're going through this. If, if this is resonating with you, you need to get help because this can, this can turn into a bad emotional, if not mental 
problem. Yes. There's a couple more signs I want to go on to before we we talk about maybe a little bit more in detail how I get over it, but that they project their issues onto you. That that's a hard one to recognize because mm. you may not realize that what they're projecting onto you is actually what they're carrying inside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're lying. You're having an affair. You're manipulating me. You're hiding stuff. You're too secretive. If they're saying that to you, you know who you are, yep. right? If they're saying that, go, oh, interesting. So now they're holding up a mirror. Yep. So you actually, you're holding up the mirror and it's reflecting back, but they're saying mm -hmm. that it's you. That it is, once you realize this, it's, it's not fun. Like none of this is fun, but it is interesting to be able to empower yourself to, to recognize and go, oh, 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 oh no, 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 no. Yeah. You don't get to put that on me. In fact, where are you right. secreting? Are you having an affair? Right. Right. I mean, you know, make sure it's safe to be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> but that, well, and that's another huge, as a whole, uh, yes. you know, segment we can do on that uh, with, with projecting uh, mm -hmm. trustworthiness and that sort of mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. uh, finally here, the, you feel isolated from friends and family. We've referenced that a little earlier in the conversation, but yeah, they're stripping you away from your world, especially people who might have influence on you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're stripping as the, ex perfectly said, they're stripping away your world. And as they do that, they're stripping away your identity. Who are you in the world? So now they've, they've isolated you. I don't like that friend. Or if the friend, oh, this is, this is really, if a friend says, you know, I don't like the way he treats you. Mm -hmm. And then she says to him, you know, uh, Joni doesn't like the way <laughs> you treat me. Well, now yeah. that Joni's going to be ousted. Okay. Well, we're not yeah. going to her house. Right. 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 So he'll just, or she. Yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. you know, are you really going to listen to your mother? <laughs> I, I, yeah, you mean the woman who birthed me and loves me unconditionally? Yeah, <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. big, yeah, big sign. Anytime somebody's trying to isolate you from family, you know, I mean, you may not like the family, you may not like the kids, but that, that's never a reason <laughs> to isolate the person, you know, the person's family. I mean, that's just yeah. something you need to learn to deal with. Yeah, because they'll mess stay with the relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Because they'll mess with his curated reality. Oh, I like that word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he's created this whole thing and the people on the outside are going, oh yeah, that's not true. Or that's, you know, stand up for yourself. Yeah. Things like that. He doesn't want that happening. She doesn't want that happening. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, so what do you do about it? How do you recover from it? You, you started to allude to that, that you really need resources to, to help you because you are, you're being driven. Yeah, you are being driven crazy. <laughs> yeah. And you might start to believe that you are. Mm -hmm. uh, in this particular article that I read, they talk about, you know, how, how to maybe work through it. And I guess maybe that's possible if, as you said, it's a light case. Maybe the person there is not just maybe they're so so insecure that they have a need to do this that can be healed i personally my opinion this is why you need to seek the experts i, I get out because if it's <laughs> if it is narcissism you're not mm -hmm. it's not going to change it, mm -hmm. you got to save yourself versus mm -hmm. the relationship is mm -hmm. my opinion what's what's your opinion or or well professional opinion you do the coaching if if the person let's say i always Basically, we, we learn things when we're small, right? If mm -hmm. they learn to manipulate and gaslight and they don't realize they're doing it, then that's worth trying to save. Mm -hmm. If, as you say, they're a narcissist, you need professional help. Mm -hmm. Not saying that it can't be saved or it can't be lived, but you've got to really make that choice because narcissism takes time and it takes mm -hmm. therapy to shift in any way. And if they're not willing to do that, then you have to decide, am I okay with living this way? And how am I going to live my, well, how, but how, cause I've, I've, I've worked with clients that have narcissistic husbands, for example. What just pops in my head when you say that, why would anybody want to stay in that? And, and I'm being, you know, okay. now I'm just talking like Silka. <laughs> right, it's, right. No, no. Why would, why would you do that? Well, if you're asking that question, other people are out there asking that mm -hmm. question. I'm trying to give people the benefit of the doubt, but also usually it's because there's children involved, mm -hmm. children, money, property, point. history, and leaving any relationship is uh, complicated, right? Mm -hmm. And then the narcissist will make it hell. Yeah. So you have to decide 
you know, which hell, <laughs> which are you, what are you choosing? And, yeah. and I, and, in a, in a perfect world, I would say you choose you so that yeah. you can live free, yeah. at however that looks. Again, Silka, I love, I love what you bring to the table. It, it's thought provoking and it really does help people. And I'm hoping this segment helps people for sure. Right. I hope so too. We get so many comments on narcissism and uh, you made a great point because I don't have kids and you know, the financial part of it is, is I've, somehow I've always managed to take care of myself, but if you can't that, yeah, that's, uh, that's, uh, or, or, or you think you can't, you've been made to believe that you can't, that makes it a, a whole, whole lot more, more difficult. My, my whole issue with the narcissism is that in order to even seek help, they have to admit that something is wrong and that usually doesn't happen. And that's why this is yeah. so, so difficult. And again, something we can talk about forever. Uh, Joni, I, we are coming to the end now. Is there anything else you want to add on this before we, before we close this very important topic? I've committed my life to helping people become conscious. I've committed my life to people finding their aliveness. I, I mean, that's my entire journey now. That's, that's all I do. And so that's what I want for the viewers. I mean, you and I have come to love them too. We, you know, we, we interact and we have relationships with them in, in a way. What I want for people is to wake up, get the tools they need to do whatever it is they need to do to find that aliveness. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. And it's the perfect time for me to talk about your new show or your oh. revamped <laughs> podcast, <laughs> Wake Up With Joni. I will, of course, link to your, your program. It's, it's wonderful. You see another oh. side of Joni here than maybe you do, you do uh, here because we focus so much on relationships. Joni has fabulous topics that uh, have a much broader reach than just here. So do tune in. Joni, I can't wait to talk to you again on Second Act TV.